Welcome to an episode of Developer Bytes. I am joined here with Derek Borgard, who I am, I think, officially pronounced it correctly. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, he is a senior developer at Beacon Digital Marketing. And uh, hi, how are you doing? Good, you? I am very well. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about macros. Uh, Derek is gifted in the area of macros, and uh, we've been exploring it a little bit, I think. We have enough content here. We're going to break this down into two videos. So this one is, this first video is just going to be kind of an intro and um, we're going to level up on video number two and do some more advanced topics with it. Um, so with that, Derek, would you go ahead and just kind of introduce what a macro is? Yeah, sure. Um, so a macro um, in its simplest form is just a reusable chunk of code um, that we can pass into modules and, and templates um, and just Kind of streamline the, de the development process. And at what point would you start trying to think about when you start planning for a macro? When, at what point is it say, you know, I'm I'm doing this. I need to think about a macro. So that usually starts in the in the um, the post design phase where you're starting to think about how you're going to build things out. Um, if you start to see an element that's used over and over and over, um, it's usually a good candidate for a macro, um, mm -hmm. uh, so that you, you're just building it in one place and you can easily edit edit it in one place and have the, um, the effects take, take place globally. And this is like a, a structural thing. So you can have that macro in different places and style it and you could skin it a thousand different ways, but this is like more of the structure of it, right? Correct, yep, yep, the bones, yep. Perfect, and um, I don't know, do you have any kind of just examples of how you would just off the top of your head, and after that we'll kind of get into maybe some, some written examples you have, but anything, what, would, what would you use it for, for example? So, so one place we often use it is um, on a card element. So you see these often mm -hmm. in blog listings and resource centers, um, just something that's used to, all throughout the site. Um, mm -hmm. So it's always a great, a great spot to, to add that um, into a, a global file that you can pull it in wherever you need it. Cool. And this is very much a developer type thing. Like if I was a marketer coming in, I would not have to worry about this at all, right? This is just something my developer took care of. Correct. And I'm yeah. good to go. Ideally, cool. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you want to go ahead and just let, walk us through a few examples here, it's to be amazing. Just getting us just kind of, I think you got the idea. We're going to just do maybe like a really simple example and mm -hmm. uh, we'll move forward from there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah. So let's, let's start with something um, very, very basic. Um, so let's say we want to construct a, a header one um, macro. So something that we can use um, to, to render a header one throughout the site. So I have mm -hmm. it in a custom module here. Um, so let's just walk through it real quick. So um, first thing we're doing is we're, is we're defining the macro, we're giving it a name, or we just called it simple macro here. Mm -hmm. And we're passing it an argument. And whatever that, whatever's passed in through here, you can render within the module. So whatever we pass here, you'll see within your header one tag. Um, and can I have more than one arguments in there? Correct, yeah, you can have as many arguments as you want, yep. So. Let's, um, let's call the macro. So I'll just cut and paste this in here. Um, so here we're calling the macro and mm -hmm. we're just passing high. So if we go over to our preview here, um, you can ignore this ah. stuff for now. You see, mm -hmm. that's it. So pretty basic, not very useful, but just a, yeah. a macro in its, in its um, fundamental um, usage here. And, so, and I could, in theory, I could uh, just, copy and paste that and replace high on the same module you have here 10 times with 10 different words or whatever I want to put in there. And it would just render that out It'd print that out, whatever's in that argument, right? Yep. That's right. Yep. Cool. Um, so now let's make this a little bit more useful. So I have this field here and just called it value to pass to the macro. So this is what we're going to use now to define this argument. So I'm going to grab okay. this and I'll replace this here. And now let's go back to our preview. So now we have this value test and whatever we put into here, um, it's gonna render oh. into the macro. So now we okay, have a so module where um, we can, we have this header one macro and we can just pass in whatever field we want on whatever page we want, so. Cool, so as a marketer, I'm starting to see the benefit of this now, right? I, I, you put this module on a page and now I can control what's going on there. Correct, yep, that's right. Um, 
So next step would be to make this a lot more useful and let's put it into a, let's put this macro into a global file that we can call throughout, um, throughout all the modules where we're gonna use this. That way we don't have to define this over and over and over. The, what we're trying to do with a macro is not repeat ourselves. So mm -hmm. one way to do that is to put this into a file. So I'm gonna cut this out of here. Um, I started this macro export file um, mm -hmm. here. Um, it's just an HTML partial, right? right here. So I'm going to mm -hmm, paste mm -hmm. it in, um, I'll publish that. And so now what, all we need to do is call that, that file. So I have that here. And that red warning right there, just saying, basically, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. What, what yeah. is this? What is this nonsense here? So let's import it now. So we're, we're importing our file and we're mm -hmm. going to define all of its contents with this, with this macros. So now all we need to do is just um, prefix this with macros dot. So now it's, it's reaching out to that mm. file and it's finding this simple macro. And then we still have the same parameter that we're passing through locally. So it should, it should work just as it, as it did before here um, where we can, um, we can put in whatever we want. It will change. So, so now okay, what, we, cool. what we can do is just grab this and this and use it wherever we need and whatever module we need. And just, just to make sure we're very clear on this. So you got another file out there called macros underscore export, right? Yep. And in that you are calling it macros in this file right now, right? Right. Yeah. And this then, could be anything we want. So, uh -huh. yep. so it could be Jim. It could and, be, yeah. <laughs> right. And then you're calling it by saying macros dot, which is basically saying, Hey, here's the file. And within that file, I have this function, this macro that I want to call. Correct. Yep. This is amazing. This is great. And I can just put this anywhere now. Like as long as I can import that, I'm I'm kind of golden, right? Exactly. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of value there because now if we wanted to, for whatever reason, make it a header two and we wanted to do that globally, we just make it in this one place. And wherever this is being used, it would it would take effect. Cool. And is there is there a time where you would have um you know, you have your global file there. Would you would you separate them out into you know multiple files? Does it make sense just for organization to do that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, if you have like resource specific macros, um, you may want to keep those separate just for your own organization. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more efficient when you're calling a um, calling a file. If you have hundreds of macros in a file that and you only need a few of them, um, it doesn't really make sense to call the whole file. Recall, is, yeah, all those macros. Yeah, right, right. So wait, you, I can, can you call, um, can you break it down even more? Can you, I guess, never mind. I, I, I don't know why I was going with that. I will stop there. <laughs> oh, what else you got for me? Yeah, uh, I think I know where you're going with that. Um, you can call a single macro from a single, single file if that's where, that's where you were. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so the next step, um, so while you're building a macro, I think everyone finds himself in the situation where they're trying to decide, um, should I, how should, should I make this one giant macro or can I break it down into more digestible chunks and then, and then create um, almost like a parent macro that you can feed things into. Right. Um, right. So I have a, another simple example of that. Um, so let's say we wanted to add some sort of um, subtext under our, under our header one module here for macro. Mm -hmm. um, so we could just put in like a header two um, and add another argument to pass through that. And that would make sense here, but mm -hmm. for, for the sake of argument, let's just say um, it's gonna be a lot more than that. And for some reason, we wanna break that down in, into two separate macros. So um, we can do that. We can, we can create a new macro and feed it into this one. So I have okay. um, another one here that I'll add in. So this is um, a new macro we're going to define called the subhead. And then this one, we're going to okay. pass in the header type. So you can make it a header two, three, four, whatever we define in our module, and then mm -hmm. the text to pass into it. Um, and then to call it into this macro, we are just going to we're gonna need to do two things here. So we got to um, we got to call our macro into here. Mm -hmm. um, pass the arguments, we need to pack, pass them into the parent as well. So we are gonna grab this. So now we're passing three okay. arguments into our parent. 
Um, mm -hmm. Two of them are going to feed down to our, our child. We'll call this the child macro. Okay. Um, we'll publish that out and come back to our, our simple macro. So now I have these other two fields in the module here, um, header type and subhead. So um, let's call this, uh, so now we need to add those parameters to our macro here. Uh, as you can see in this one here, I, have, I just have three different header types defined that we can pass mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And, and then our just a text field here. So, that, all right, so now let's go into our preview. So now, now we have our subhead rendering. Um, mm -hmm. We can choose if we want to make that a header four. We can make a header four. You can see how it changed um, and, and add to it as need be. So just a basic example of, of how we can create a, a parent-child macro relationship. Right. Um, and you could probably have some statements in your module to say it, when you want to render you know, the subhead, for example, like, like a, a Boolean or something like that. that would exactly, just, yeah, yeah. Um, good, good, uh, a good opportunity there to add some, some conditionals in here so we can make it even mm -hmm. more useful. Mm -hmm. And those those red errors I'm seeing right now is basically it's just I don't know what this is right now, right? Right. It's because this is a HTML. It's saying you know this is this, this saying this isn't valid HTML, but it does work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there ever a time where you'd have this macro in a different file from your parent macro? Does that even work? Yeah. So you, you can you could call this into if we had this in a different file, we would um, do just what we're doing in in this file where we would mm -hmm. import that whatever file that is up here. And then we would call it similarly to how, how we um, did the other one. So whatever we defined it as, it would be that name dot right. subhead. And I imagine very good comments on this probably make this a lot better. So you know what's going on, right? Because this, if you just came here and saw this, you might not know, know what's doing what, right? Yep. As always, as always, add, add comments wherever, wherever yeah. possible. So, yep. This is good stuff, Derek. Thank you so much for uh, working with me on this. Next time, uh, you have some really cool examples. Uh, I am really excited to explore them. Um, if you guys have any questions about what we're doing here, please feel free to reach out, put something in the thread. Uh, this will be posted in the blog. So yeah, you can comment and uh, we'll make sure to be monitoring that. And thank you very much. Derek, thank you. have a great day. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.